Today I wasn't looking for anything in particular, just kind of like some basic general news, like Washington, D.C. still being there. Uh, you know, the sky is blue. Greed and corruption are still rampant in our government. And I ended up running across an article that I hadn't seen before. Now, the Bible says that there is nothing new under the sun, and I'm absolutely certain that that is true. So I also know that this type of article and the things that this pastor is doing in his church is probably not nothing new, but it's the first time I've seen it. But anyway, what I want to do is take a look and show you this article. Now, it's in the description box, and you can click on the link, but here's a picture here. Now, the title is Church's Money Giveaway. All Slip Pastors Cash Prizes Fills Pews. Ministers focus to help congregation pay bills and begin a debt-free life. And there you see the little picture there of uh, Reverend Dan Willis. He holds a box with cash that he gives to lucky worshipers at his services. Now, you know what? I'm just kind of, I mean, I'm almost speechless because at what point do you draw the line and say enough is enough? I mean, is there a point? Is the, the end justifies the means? What extent do you go to? Now, I've seen churches where they've dressed up like clowns, uh, they've had Elvis, uh, they have big stage shows, they preach everything but the gospel, uh, they don't preach Christ crucified, but I mean, it's all about being uh, uh, relevant, you know? Everybody has that same slick, faux mohawk haircut with the shirts, and, you know, it looks just like that pastor I showed you in the picture. It seems like everybody's becoming a cookie-cutter uh, market-driven society where now we have to attract people by becoming as close to the world as possible. In other words, we're throwing off holiness. We're throwing off being set apart. We're throwing off personal conviction. And more importantly, we're throwing off the gospel of Christ and letting the Holy Spirit convict people and draw people to fellowship. Church was never supposed to be a market-driven monster that it is today. And if we look in the article, you can end up and it, sees, and it says that uh, at Lighthouse Church of All Nations in Alslip, the congregation can get more than just prayer at the Sunday worship services. If a lucky or blessed and highly favored churchgoer is in the right seat, they can also receive a cash prize. At each of the three Sunday services, Reverend Dan Willis pulls a number of one seat from a bag, and the worshiper in that seat wins a cash prize. Two of the churchgoers win $250, and the third gets $500. The church gives away $1,000 each Sunday, said Willis. Now, it says here in the article that, you know, he says that it's to, to help the congregation to pay bills and begin a debt-free life. But then later on in the article, it goes on and it says that Willis concedes the cash prize is a gimmick to fill the pews. Let me read that again. Willis, the pastor of this church, concedes, or in other words, admits that the cash prize is a gimmick to fill the pews. But he's unapologetic about the plan because it's working. It's that whole, the end justifies the means thing. On a typical Sunday, his church draws about 1,600 people to its three Sunday services. But since the money giveaway started about five weeks ago, the congregation has grown to about 2,500 each week. He said, the money for the giveaway comes from the church offering. Wow. The Lighthouse is a non-denominational church. And the pastor says, if you can get someone in here and teach them and give them money, that's what I'm going to do, he said. As part of the lessons, Willis set up a shredder near the pulpit to encourage church members to shred their credit cards and commit to stop spending. He talks about budgeting, tackling past due bills, and savings. He encourages the prize winners to use their money to pay down their bills rather than splurge on new items. One Sunday, he gave away 15 savings accounts with $25 already in them. Ain't that special? And he had a bank representatives at the service so church members could set up accounts. 
he even goes on to say at the end of the article, the Bible even says an ant stores up in the summer so it can live in the winter, Willis said. And even an ant can teach us. Even an ant knows how to save. We, with intellect, don't know how to do it. When people see that in Scripture, it takes on a whole different view. Now, I don't know about you, but it used to be that church was about preaching the gospel. It was about being set apart because people were confronted with the gospel message that man sinned, that man's going to stand before God on judgment day, and he's going to be found guilty for breaking God's law. And just like a judge here on earth, he's going to stand before that judge, and you're going to be guilty, and the punishment is hell. It's prison for eternity. And there's nothing that we can do. There's no amount of money that we can use to bribe our way out of that prison. And so our fate is pretty much sealed. And then yet, the penalty and the punishment has to be satisfied according to the law. A man steps up to the judge before the sentencing, and you know that you're going to hell. You know that you're going to prison. You're already in shackles and chains. Somebody jumps up and says, hey, stop. I'll pay the fine. I'll take the punishment. The requirements of the law will be fulfilled. Now, according to the judge, he looks at the law because it's perfect. And he sees that this man's sacrifice will take care of that person. That they can be set free. But they have to be convicted of what they did was wrong. And now just like you or I, if we stand before that judge or we stood before that person that paid our fine, most of us, I should hope most of us, would be grateful that out of a lifetime in punishment for eternity, we would give up our lives. We would admit that what we did was wrong and we would pledge ourselves to that person. That we would ask for his forgiveness and for putting him in our place. Those people that do that are Christians. They're the real Christians. They're not the fake ones, the plastic ones. But what we end up now is having a church that has to use money to get them into church to preach something other than the gospel. The end does not justify the means because now a person's motivation to go to church and fellowship is not to worship and praise God and to die to self and to take on the image of Christ, to be an approved workman, to be holy as he is holy. Now it's about money. We've become so relevant that we've lost our way. And we've ended up in this market-driven society where the end justifies the means and the goal of the church is to fulfill the needs of the people and this is one of the ways that they're doing it. Instead of preaching the gospel and the law of God and the full gospel message to the point of where it drives us to our knees and we repent. How can you have fellowship with God when you have such two diverse groups of people? One is after money and fulfilling their desires now, where the other group of people are wanting to die to self because Jesus took their punishment, because Jesus forgave their sin. He forgave them for breaking God's law, and God accepted that. To live is Christ, to die is gain. To put off the things of the, of the old nature and behold, all things are new. I don't know. It's just not working. Get back to God's word, seek him, and obey. Take care. God bless. Peace.